David Ben-Gurion was an active Zionist from an early age, forming a Zionist youth group in Warsaw and later making Aliyah and becoming involved in the labor movement in the land of Israel. Ben-Gurion was the head of the Jewish Agency, which was the government in waiting, and as such he declared the State of Israel's independence on the 5th of year 1948. He led the Mapai Party, Workers' Party of Eretz Israel. This later merged into the Israeli Labour Party. The big question, to declare a state or not? It's Friday afternoon on 14th of May 1948, the 5th of year, and the British are leaving Palestine at midnight. You are David Ben-Gurion. If you declare a state now, you might not get UN recognition as you've declared it too early and you may lose a war against the Arabs. Your army is not ready yet. But if you wait a few weeks, in order for any violence with the Arabs to cease, you may lose the initiative and never get a chance to declare it. What do you do? Moshe Sharet was born in Russia and made Aliyah in 1906. He was involved in forming the Jewish Brigade of the British Army during World War II. He also helped save Jews from the Nazis by taking part in rescue missions. Like Ben-Gurion, he was a member of the Mapai Party. He was later the chairman of the World Zionist Organization and the Jewish Agency. His short spell as Prime Minister was beset by problems. There were many incidents along the border with Egypt worsening in Israel's international relations, as well as the discovery of an Israeli spy network which he did not know about. The big question is to respond or not. Sharet disagreed with Ben-Gurion and believed that Israel should not always retaliate against attacks as it would worsen Israel's relations abroad. What do you think? Levi Eshkol is not one of the most well-known Israeli Prime Ministers, but presided over a very important time in its history. He was from the Mapai Party, but created the Alignment, a coalition of left-wing parties in the Knesset. His time in office was noted for its economic advances with the introduction of the National Water Carrier in 1964, allowing efficient water supply throughout Israel. He also established diplomatic ties with West Germany and cultural ties with the Soviet Union. His good relationship with the American President Lyndon Johnson, he was, he was the first Israeli Prime Minister to make an official state visit to visit the USA, was to be crucial in the Six-Day War. The big question, to launch a preemptive strike or not? Faced by enemies on all sides, one wrong move and Israel could be destroyed. The Egyptian President Gamal Nasser has been building up an army on your border and has, has ordered the United Nations peacekeepers to leave. He has built a coalition of, of Arab states and has repeatedly called for the imminent destruction of the State of Israel. More importantly, he has closed off the Straits of Tehran, blocking Israeli trade to Southeast Asia, East, South, East and South Africa and Australia. Do you launch a surprise attack on the Egyptians or do you wait for them to start attacking you? If you allow them to attack, Israel could be defeated on all sides, especially if Jordan join in. As you have probably guessed, Eshkol's decision was to launch the strike. In one morning, Israel destroyed the Egyptian Air Force. In six days, Israel had conquered the Sinai, the Golan Heights, Judea and Samaria, and most importantly, Jerusalem. This became known as the Six Day War. Golda Meir, one of the world's first female prime ministers, was part of the Mapai Alignment Party. She was known as the Iron Lady of Israeli politics. Possibly the two most famous incidents of her time in, a, in office were the murder of Israeli athletes by terrorists in 1972 at the Munich Olympics and the Yom Kippur War in 1973. The big question, to try and repeat history or not? Were the Arabs trying to recreate the Six Day War or was it a bluff? In 1973, Meir received intelligence of a Syrian build-up of troops near the border with Israel. However, she did not mobilize Israel's troops early. Many of her advisers said that they would have had more notice if they thought a war was to break out. Even hours before the war, she sided with Moshe Dayan, who did not believe a war was coming. 
Although she was wrong and that a war did occur, we know that if they had attacked Syria in a preemptive strike, America would not have supported Israel. As you all know, Syria did attack on Yom Kippur, and the Americans supported Israel's war. Yitzhak Rabin is probably one of the most famous Israeli prime ministers. He was one of the most, the, the most respected Israeli military generals and played a crucial role in capturing parts of Jerusalem in the War of Independence. He was the chief of staff of the IDF during the Six Day War. When prime minister, he stood for the Mapai alignment, which later became the Labour Party. He was responsible for authorising the raid on Entebbe, a mission to rescue Israeli hostages taken captive by Palestinian terrorists in Uganda. The mission was successful against all odds, but the captain, Yoni Netanyahu, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's brother, was killed along with one other hostage. Robin became Prime Minister again in 1992, shortly after the end of the First Intifada. He wanted to start a peace process with the Palestinians, with the possibility of dividing the land of Israel. The Madrid conference in 1991 had already made the first moves, but Rabin took the process much further. The unprecedented Oslo Accords were a secret process with the Palestinian leadership, which culminated in the signing of the Accords in the White House in 1993. It featured the famous handshake between Rabin, Sheikh, between Rabin and Yasser Arafat, heading the Palestinian Liberation Organization. The big question is, to negotiate with terrorists or not? Do you sit down with your arch enemy who has personally planned attack terrorist attacks against your country? By shaking hands with Arafat, you are legitimizing him and the PLO, which was undoubtedly a terrorist organization. You could be seen as, dis as disrespecting the memory of Israelis who have died at the hands of Arab terrorism. However, the situation on the ground is not good. The Palestinians are a large people living on your doorstep. They cannot be ignored. By initiating a peace process, you are taking a chance, a big risk, that maybe the terrorists might put down their guns, negotiate and desire peace. What would you have done? Rabin went ahead with the peace process and won the Nobel Peace Prize. However, he was assassinated in 1995 after a peace rally in Tel Aviv and was deeply mourned by the nation. The day of his death is still commemorated in Israel as Yom Rabin. Although many admire Rabin for his efforts in trying to achieve peace, so many people recognize that the Oslo Accords many problems that are affecting Israeli society today.